Hello and welcome, my name is Ryan, I'm also known as RM2K Dev. Today we have a package from China. This is going to be an unboxing of the TN4 T200 SLA resin 3D printer. So I've got the box open. The first thing that I've seen is the packaging has been replaced with a travel adapter. And uh, unfortunately, I don't think uh, it's too safe to use this one. Like the layers of an onion, we have made our way inside the box. I'm going to proceed to take off this foam padding uh, and stand the printer up, I suppose. So I've taken the first layer of foam off, and as you can see, it looks like all the contents have been packed inside the printer. Uh, overall, the condition is fairly good. It doesn't look like there's been any damage during shipping, but we'll we'll soon find out as we get further into this uh, into this box. Moving on, we find two boxes inside of the printer, as well as a bunch of packing foam, just kind of keeping all of this nice and safe, I suppose. Uh, looking into the machine itself, um, just back here, this is uh, well oiled. Um, it's got some kind of uh, grease or lubrication on those linear rails up there. Quite happy to see that. Um, yep, we'll continue digging deeper into this uh, into this printer. Looking into the first box, we find a power supply. That is a beefy looking power supply. It reminds me of the uh, Xbox 360 style. It's got a bit of weight to it as well. Uh, let's have a look at the text here. Apologies for the focus. Um, what have we got? 24 volt, 10 amp on the output and uh, 100 to 240. So it looks like it uh, it works worldwide. You just need to get any kind of, uh, uh, I don't know what the proper name for this is, a computer cable, but uh, you just need to get one of those and plug it in. It looks like it will work anywhere. So in this box, it looks like we've found the assortment of uh, usual 3D printing uh, accessories. This one appears to have come with a ethernet cable for connecting this printer to the network. Uh, looking deeper inside this package, it's come with a series of Allen keys or hex wrenches, depending on where you're from. Quality products from Hua Feng. Uh, so here it looks like the uh, Z-axis build plate, uh, some kind of milled aluminum as a uh, my friends overseas like to call it. Um, we call it aluminium, but yeah, this looks like the uh, the build plate for the Z axis. Uh, and again, this is part of the reason why I chose this printer. That Z, sorry, that um, build width, that build volume there is is quite significant for a SLA DLP uh, 3D printer. So moving on. Furthermore, we have some KTM branded plastic spatulas and scrapers. This is for getting the prints off the bed. We have some paper funnels for reusing our resin. Oh, it appears to have come with a, a metal spatula as well, um, as well as the plastic ones. So that's interesting. And uh, that's it for the second box. Let's uh, move on to powering up this machine, assembling everything together and just getting it into a workable state. Clean up the desk a little bit and uh, we'll, uh, we'll get a test print going. All right, so everything is now plugged in, as you can see. Let's uh, reach around the back and turn it on. Let's have a look at the screen down here. And get my camera to focus. There you go, as you can see that says uh, T200 SLA printer loading. Dot, dot, dot. Um, so, this is the first time I've powered it on. Let's uh, have a look and see what we get. While that's loading, let's have a more in-depth look at some of these features. We have the dual uh, linear rails for the build platform up here. Uh, we have the two quick-release connectors which I used on 
this uh, build plate here looks like it's probably being used or you know tested in China to make sure that it was working um, that's still loading we have the uh, the uh, the resin tray up here oh there we go that's just loaded uh, and the first thing I can see is that all of this is in English it's interesting so let's have a look what settings do we have we have uh, English and Chinese that's our language options uh, we have network connections let me just click on that there we go uh, it does appear to have Wi-Fi um, I don't know how you set that though um, we have control I assume that's control for all of our for our one axis uh, I'm gonna go in one millimeter distances down As you can see that is working correctly let's have a look at information so we have some QR codes here for support and sales um, we have a printing menu we can print a fan guard and an auto calibration plate and again this is a uh, quite nice that it's a fairly responsive touchscreen um, so it's not a uh, so what I'm looking for sort of resistive it appears to be capacitive uh, and then we have options here for the projector so I'm just gonna go in here and we'll check out the projector I'm gonna set it to grid and it'll take a second and as you can see the grid projection appears I'm gonna set it to outline there we go and I'm not actually sure what's supposed to happen here let's try white there we go so that's white that's just view all um, yeah I think that's all pretty normal normal 3d printing stuff for the SLA printers this is my first SLA printer I have a uh, any cubic photon coming as well just to do some uh, small production stuff at home uh, but yeah so that is the operating system I'm gonna go ahead and get all of this installed onto the machine now and uh, we'll load it up with some resin and we'll get a resin print started oh and uh, one other thing before we go the uh, the door is a little bit a little bit of an oddity um, the door appears to just be a piece of plastic and it just appears to kind of slot in there like that it has got some kind of magneticness to it but that's essentially the door so uh, and then yeah in terms of noise as you can probably tell it's fairly noisy uh, it does have two big fans at the back there so fairly noisy little printer it's it's about as noisy as the CR10 I just power that up you can probably hear them kind of equally being noisy so um, in terms of noise yeah it seems to be about the same level of noise I'm not sure if that will continue throughout the entire print or if that slows down but yeah that's a quick look at the TN4 uh, T200 3D printer a fairly nice machine well built very very well built the whole thing is is made out of aluminum um, or some kind of composite metal or something it's definitely not plastic um, the only thing I don't really like is this front door but it seems to do a good job of just letting you peek in like that you can just peek in there and then just push it shut um, I don't think that's gonna go anywhere it's not gonna fall off by itself it's got this little clamp down there where it holds itself on so overall I'm pretty happy with that and then the screen is quite nice as well so let me go ahead and get this all assembled we'll get some resin in there and we'll get a time-lapse going I guess of a print if we can get a time-lapse going I don't know if you'll be able to see through through this screen we'll see if I can focus beyond the screen anyway one thing I would like to point out is that the uh, FEP screen that's come on this uh, it looks like it has been uh, tested I assume they've tested it uh, in in the factory but if you look carefully you might be able to catch that on the camera there are some dents and divots to this screen so it looks like maybe there's some damage to that uh, we'll have to see how it prints before we come to any conclusions though um, but I just wanted to put that into this video just so that we can see 
Um, so I just wanted to say I've gone ahead and uh, sliced a model over here. Um, it's just a, a small model. Uh, the test prints that were on here were a bit weird. It was like a fan cover of some kind. Uh, I've gone ahead and also put in some green any cubic resin over here, which is the uh, the resin that I purchased when I ordered this printer, which also has arrived. So I will put the lid back on. This print uh, should take approximately uh, two hours to come out, so I'm just going to leave it and we'll come back and uh, see if that print has been successful. Um, I've had no time to to really calibrate or adjust this machine. I don't know what the settings are. I'm just going off the um, the AnyCubic uh, resin uh, suggestions. There's a there's a, a forum on Facebook where people have got a, a spreadsheet where they've suggested certain times for certain layers and things like that. So I'm just going to let this run. We'll come back in about an hour and a half, two hours, and I'll let you know what the results are. I've got a, uh, a bath ready and uh, some isopropyl alcohol, which I'll be using to obviously wash the prints after. And uh, I've got a small UV curing setup, which I've, uh, I've, I've put together over the weekend, and uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. So, so I just wanted to make an update. Um, I've come back, uh, it's, it's been about 20 minutes or so now. Um, it looks like the first print was a failure. I, uh, I hit the pause button on the print to see what was happening and uh, the, the print bed came up and uh, as you can see I had supports on the, uh, on the print bed, on the Z side of the print bed, sorry, and this was stuck to the FEP film, the FEP film at the bottom of the printer. So. Um, not 100% sure why that one failed. It looked like it was going fairly well, to be honest, um, all the way through the supports. Um, I've cured this and cleaned it off quickly just to handle it and see what the material was like. Um, but I've gone ahead and started another print. It's the same model, uh, so I'll come back once that's done and we'll see how that goes. All right, so it's been a couple of hours. I have just uh, caught the machine ending. I'm just gonna pull this up. We can have a look under there. I've kept an eye on it. It has been going pretty well this whole time. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna sort of drain all that resin back into the vat down there. Um, and we'll go ahead and take the print out and put it into the alcohol bath. Okay, so I've got the print here. Um, it's uh, it's been washed quite well. It's still a little bit wet just from the water. I'm gonna go ahead and throw it into my uh, quick little DIY UV chamber that everyone seems to have made. So I'm just gonna put that down there, and then uh, I'll just plug that one in. Just plug that in. I'm trying to do this one-handed. There we go. You see that's getting a fair amount of uh, UV down there just to just to harden those inside layers and uh, uh, solidify the print okay there we have it the uh, final result from the TN4 T200 the detail is actually incredible um, there's no visible layer lines that I can see but I chose a, uh, a fairly complicated looking model just to test this with anyway um, I will continue to let this harden uh, harden in the in the UV light for a little while but as you can see the print quality has uh, has come out really good so I'm back over here at the printer I just wanted to say thank you guys for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. You'll find links to where you can purchase this printer, uh, the same place, the same store that I purchased it from uh, in the description below this video. And uh, I hope this has been a good unboxing and uh, shown you exactly what this machine can do.
Uh, I've got another print going, and I think you guys will probably end up seeing that in the next video. So thank you for watching, take care, and bye for now.